Hi, this is Regeline Saba, also known as Gigi. You're listening to Walk With Me Podcast. Joining me today is Melanie Eight. Today, we're going to discuss walking through 2020 with everyday leaders. Walk into 2021 with purpose. Welcome, Melanie. Gosh, Gigi, thank you so much. This has been such a fun year to walk with you. Amazing to watch what you've done and accomplished in 2020. Thank you. Likewise, my friend. And I'm super excited to be here with you today. Honored to be here with you to discuss walking through 2020 with you and also with purpose into 2021. So let's talk about that for a little bit here. Let's talk about what really impacted your life and your clients and your goals uh, for 2021. What impacted your life in 2020? Gosh. All right. So four years ago in January, I started this podcast of Everyday Leaders. And we started out the year celebrating all of my people from the podcast for the last two years. So we did that February the 29th of 2020. Now, that was just two weeks before the shutdown, right? March 13th was Friday the 13th, and we shut everything down globally. So just two weeks before that, I had Chip Baker, I had Jamal Sylvester, I had Sonia Echemendi. Melanie Fusilier, Kathleen Grimes, Jennifer Garrett, and Jeff Patterson that were infusing people about how to lead their life with success on the one extra day that we had in 2020 to think about your own leadership, which was the Everyday Leaders Summit. So I brought a few things. Can I share them? Yes, (laughs) ma'am. So, so right. So this was part of what we brought out, right? Everybody got to take their picture of how they were going to change the world in 2020. So if you came to the conference, this is what you got to take your picture with. And we celebrated all the success. So, right. So we brought everybody together and said, great. Well, there's a podcast, but the intentionality chapter one in my favorite growth book, the 15 laws of growth right? Chapter one is intentionality. So I look back and say, how was I intentional every single day of 2020? So that's how it started off. And it just ended a few weeks ago with becoming certified with the Y Institute. So now all of these things that I've been learning, putting it together with how we start our core conversations with why we do what we do and why we believe what we believe to build our business and our customers. And so it's been a phenomenal year of growth. Every, everybody says, right? Like, oh my gosh, I didn't, I wasn't prepared. I didn't know how to adjust. I didn't know how to, we well, don't have to. When you're conditioned and when you're showing up every day with consistency about what you believe, you're conditioning yourself every day. You don't have to worry about how to fix things. You just continue to be consistent. And my goodness, your life just becomes, it becomes clear and you have so much momentum already built in. You're conditioned just like an athlete. You practice to show up on game day. So for me, Gigi, this COVID-19, this shutdown was like, that's game day, right? It's game day. Let's go. Let's let's show up. So that's what I feel like has happened. And it has been an amazing ride. Um, better than ever. Better, better than ever. Likewise, my friend. Now, let's talk about your goals for 2021. Man, I'm telling you, knocking it out of the park, right? Knocking it out of the park, consulting clients, uh, really getting into corporate organizations to be able to help them with all of, hey, Andrea, Andrea. (laughs) helping them with all of their leadership capacity. And so I think there is so much magic when you are able to take a group of people and walk them through their strategies and really give them the tactics uh, and the applications to be able to achieve goals. And so learning what I've learned up until this point, I go, wow, I have a bigger capacity. I've been equipped with so much more capacity and I'm ready to step into that. I'm ready to walk those steps. Like you would say, walk with me. Let's go. Let's take those steps and let's do this. Amen. Now, Melanie, for the listeners that are listening in, can you share a little bit of your story and what even got you started in doing what you do with everyday leaders? Talk to us. You know, so uh, so for years I I was in medical. I was in medical sales. I was in medical leadership, creating teams, creating strategies, developing training programs. Again, equipping virtual training for many years before 
COVID-19 happened. So I was able to then serve a bigger population, just leaning back on what I was already equipped to do. So when we say, what did we learn? You know, those dots that are traced back to our history, it is so apparent to what my gifts were that I just needed to realize it. And COVID's given me that time to say, who are the people that I need to serve even in a bigger capacity? Hey, Anza. Hey, Anza. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> so, hey, Lisa. Um, so we are just stepping into this, right? I mean, there have been virtual summits. I know we've done three virtual summits together. And if I had not been able to build agendas for medical device companies uh, in the time that I had gotten to learn that when I worked there, now I can do it in seconds because, again, I'm using all the strengths that I had in my bag to be able to then walk and step into what my real purpose and calling is. And that's really just paying attention to the people that need you and who you need to serve. And so that's what I am so excited about. I mean, I think you can probably tell my passion. <laughs> but I love it, right? Because, because now we get to use our gifts. And when you find that and you say, okay, my why is to challenge. My why I know is to challenge the status quo. And so what I've learned is when I'm connecting to customers, I want clients that are also wanting to challenge how it looks every single day. They want to look different. They want to go out and change the world because challengers for the Y Institute say, when you say you want to change the world, you actually mean it. <laughs> you actually want to find out a way that you can make an impact. So that's what I just... Everything, everything that I've been doing, the signs point to go this way down this path and everything has culminated together. And so for me, it's the most exciting time going into 2021 to see my vision on that vision mastery board. All right, Steve, Steve Gamlin, there you go, your vision mastery board. But it's so true. You have to have that vision. You have to see it. You have to write it down and you have to stay accountable to yourself to be able to make those dreams come true. Very powerful. Now, can you explain to us what is the main lesson that you learned in 2020 that you will continue to take with you into 2021? Oh, man, this is a great question. And I love this because we've been talking about it every day, which is meeting people where they are, right? Meeting, giving people grace and meeting people where they are. Because if you don't understand that, that lesson, right? We've been doing a Bible study since 2019, October 1st, 2019, every day. So 453 days we've met. And what we see that, you know, it's the living word, it's the Bible, and it teaches you those same principles, meet people where they are. And if you do that, and you don't have expectations, you understand who you're here to serve. You don't look for, oh my gosh, I've got to connect to this whole different industry or this whole different population you actually attract what you're showing up as. So when I say I love people that are motivated, that want to go change the world, that want to be challenged, that's who I connect to. And when I put that out to the world, that's what attracts to me. And so it makes life a lot easier when you know exactly your why and exactly the steps that your heart is wanting to serve in the universe. And, and God really does that for you. When you have that heart, that open heart of serving, things just come to you as that law of attraction. And so I can't explain it any differently except for if you haven't experienced that, keep going. Because <laughs> it's, like, it's right in front of you. You can almost touch it, but you just have to push yourself and keep equipping yourself till you get to that point where you go, ah, I see it. I see it. It's clear now. I see it. So it's right in front of you. Very powerful, Melanie. Now let's talk about your podcast. Everyday Leaders. Talk to us about that. Oh, everyday Leaders. So I developed it uh, as I was turning 50. A lot of people ask me, do I have to be 50 to be on your show? No. <laughs> but what it was is it was a spot of inspiration. And when I was going through major transformation, massive transformation, I'll use your word, in my life, right, trying to figure out what my next step was going to look like. And I felt empty inside, working at a job that I really loved but I didn't feel like I was adding value. I didn't have the capacity to add the value that I wanted. And so as I started to turn 50, um, I had been in the John Maxwell team for about a year and I started writing, just journaling. 
you know, what was I going to look like when I turned 50? Was I going to do something exorbitant? Was I going to, you know, have a party? You know, what, what did that look like for me? What I knew was that it wasn't just a day. It was to do something bigger with my life. And so many people will like go and climb a mountain or they'll go take a trip. But for me, I said, I've got to start organizing something where I can give back and inspire people. And so to do that, I leaned back on things that I knew, right? I was already equipped. I took journalism in school. I created our first radio program in high school. Like all of those things that I started tapping into, what if I could start doing a podcast? And what if I could start interviewing people that really were on my heart to share stories of inspiration? And so it was all developed on helping people develop strategies to overcome obstacles in their life. And here it is going into the fourth year, and it has turned into so many positive things to bring people back to that same space that if they are struggling with developing strategies, it gives them tools and tips and practices, right, that we all can be encouraged with. And so, but Gigi, here's the thing. I've been connected to some amazing leaders in the world. Michael Lane, that has, um, is responsible for people like Grant Cardone and Tony Robbins and Sally Illingworth that is really teaching everybody on LinkedIn what hashtags are, how to do stories, how to really market yourself in this new world. Um, Lee Cockrell, the VP of Disney, right? So people that really shared their heart with how did they get to where they are in developing these strategies. So I just love this journey. I know that it is, um, it's an open book. And, and I say, all of these leaders that I love to interview, just like you, right, we learn from each other. And then we're able to say, gosh, what can I do differently to challenge the world? I'm a challenger. So I want to know, what am I missing? Where's the gap? And how can I impact the world in a bigger way? So that's what I've learned. It's, it's wonderful. It's 50 shows in 50 weeks. And that's the 50 and 50. And, uh, and here it goes. You're four here in just a couple of weeks. Amen. It sounds like 2020 was a very successful year for you. Now, let's talk about any challenges that you may have faced in 2020. Uh, you know, so I think we talked about this last time, but um, in July, I had a significant kind of uh, spot, right? It's even hard to talk about. Uh, but my dad was an identical twin and his, his identical twin passed away in July. And my father passed away in 1973. So for me, this was kind of like my dad, looking at my dad every day, having a relationship with somebody that, that I just was able to still live in that moment with, live, share the stories, share the memories. And so in July, right in the middle of COVID, you know, we thought, hey, it's going to go away. We're going to be able to go places and travel without mask. But, you know, I got on a plane in July and it was really tough because I was so sad and so lonely and so trying to get somewhere so that I could see someone, so I could share a last moment with them. And I didn't make it. And I didn't make it. Um, it and some of it was because, you know, you couldn't, you didn't know if you could travel during COVID. And so we were careful, but I missed an opportunity to say one last goodbye. And so what I learned through that just Everybody, I am so connected to the emotions of people going through the same thing with their loved ones, not being able to hold their hand, not being able to say goodbye, not being able to be present with them because of this crazy world that we're living in this year. And it's been, um, you know, it, the realization that what you have to do in your moment right now to say goodbye, to appreciate people, to have gratitude for everything in your life. That's uh, that's what I've learned. That's what my clients are learning. And uh, and that's what I think everybody's trying to do better. Right. We're using Zoom. But gosh, if you can go and hug somebody with a mask and just let them know that you really do care about them deeply. Um, it's the opportunity this year to make sure that you've done that. And so I've learned a lot. It's it's been tough. Right. And so we go back and say, well, what would you have changed? Well, nothing. Right. Don't change anything because it wouldn't bring you to the point where you have the awareness today. And, and so I encourage everybody, if you've, if you've known somebody that's gone through that pain or that grief this year, that's a really tough place when you're experiencing it personally, right? Because you feel that just sense of discomfort and you've got to have 
some, some sort of closure uh, like any other transition in your life. So I encourage you to figure out a way to symbolize that uh, in maybe a different or unique way uh, this year so that you can move, move forward through it. Amen. And I'm so sorry for the loss of your uncle, Melanie. Thanks. My condolences. You're welcome. Now, you and I collaborated on a few projects here, as well as with Andrea and Lisa Edwards that are on this uh, listening in now. Now, tell us how those projects transformed your life. And I'm talking about the global virtual panel of domestic violence survivors, sexual assault survivors, and breast cancer survivors. Wow. You know, first of all, I want to thank you for even bringing me into that because as we were talking every week and you said, hey, I'm going to do these. I think I want to do this kind of a summit and virtual panel, right? And here's the people that I'm going to bring on. And I thought, wow, are you sure you can do that live? Like that's such a private thing that people have to discuss. What I learned is how powerful that was. People that you had designed this program for, Gigi, it, it, sometimes it was the very first time that they were able to communicate what had actually happened and transformed in their life. And, and right. So we know as coaches that sometimes all you want is to be heard. And once you're heard, once you once you feel like you're listened to and that you can explain how that felt, that gives you that sense of freedom and transition that you've never felt before. And I know on some of these panels that just listening to the pain and the agony and the fear that people had and knowing that if they could just share that and help one other person, that was the point. And they helped each other. They've bonded. You've created these amazing Facebook groups for this for these discussions. And so what I felt was just a sense of awareness that, gosh, right, meet people where they are and help them wh wherever they are to be able to express their feelings and get them through what could be fearful to then feeding their faith and understanding that how to give gratitude and freedom from themselves. Uh, and, and I think in every situation, the domestic violence, the sexual assault, and the breast cancer survivors, you know, each of these members, each of these panelists felt a sense of freedom to be able to get and share and now have a sense of community. So I applaud you for all that you put together in this vision because these women and men that are participating have now a community uh, that they can depend on and rely on and go to. So you are really making a massive transformation in these lives. And I really do applaud you for that. Amen. And thank you for sponsoring the events, Melanie, and for being our master of ceremonies. I truly appreciate you. And now we're going to do something on the show that we've never done before, where we're gonna actually hand it over to you, the mic. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. All right, Gigi. All Thank right. you for joining today on the Walk With Me podcast. And I am your host, Melanie Ake. And here we go. We're going to interview Gigi Sabat, Regeline Gigi Sabat, who is a two-time author, podcast host, motivational speaker, first-generation Haitian-American, my friend, love her to death. Why don't you tell us about starting with your why, Gigi? I want to hear your story. Yes, you need to be intentional in everything that you do, and you must know your why. How can you reach your goals if you don't even know why you're doing it? So start with the why. Why do you even want to reach that goal or that dream? And you, like Les Brown says, you have to be hungry. <laughs> you have to be hungry. And tell me about the business that you started because of your why. When I met you back in May, well, before that, but when we really started thinking about things together, it was May of this year. And you said to me, I want to start a podcast, but I don't even know what to call it. And, and so talk to me about when you wrote your first book, what did that title mean to you in your why? Yes, ma'am. So essentially it's right behind me. Walk with me. And let's backtrack a little bit. And I'll tell you this, that I almost lost my life a year and a half ago. And so for me, I'm just truly grateful to be here. My life transformed tremendously after that. So here I was speaking, you know, in the law school. I was already a speaker uh, for the law school, um, overseeing all SBA organizations. But here's the thing. I'll never forget the day my life changed forever. And I had just got done studying. And here I was on a phone call with a colleague from SBA. And I'll never forget the abuser that charged at me that day and almost strangled me to death. And I'll never forget when I tried to get back up, I fell flat like a vegetable. And again, for me, I'm just truly grateful to be here. 
because when I spoke with the domestic violence advocates, they told me, oh, well, it's because you lost oxygen to the brain is why you fell. And I said, oh my goodness, I'm again, grateful to be here. So that transformed my life. And I'm, I'm so grateful for the individuals who came into my life, such as Andy Ade and you know, my book publisher, Michael D. Butler and Daniel Gomez and you, Melanie Ake, you all have transformed my life. You, I'm just grateful to have, be surrounded by genuine individuals with huge hearts and just really understanding the importance of having God first place in, in our lives. And also too, you know, what inspired me to write Walk With Me is to help others understand to never give up. Hence, one of my poems in the book is never give up. So I mentioned the trials and tribulations that I've had to overcome in my life, such as domestic violence and sexual assault, because I want people to understand that no matter what happens, get back up, get back up. God knows the plans he has for you. Keep going and keep moving forward. And if there's a detour along the way, that's fine. Nine times out of 10, he did it for a reason. Get back up and keep going. And again, my books are a sequence. Walk with me, God first. I talk about God first because why? I want people to understand the importance of having God first place in their lives. We wouldn't have all the issues that we have in society if people were to keep God first place in their lives. So that's that's why I have walk with me, God first, because what does the Bible say? Bring my people to me. So that's what I'm literally doing. Walk with me, God first. And then hence the title of the podcast, Walk With Me. And in the back of my book as well, it, towards the end, I mentioned how we need to continue to walk together in this society to continue to raise awareness in regards to the major topics. I've listed a few already, domestic violence, sexual assault, the opiate crisis, and so forth. There's so many. And I discuss a few in my book. But I can't do it alone because I'm only one person. But as God's servants, we can do it together. We can change the world together. Mm. I truly believe in that. Change the world, baby. I know. I hear it. I hear you. And that's what's so exciting, right? When you understand your why and your purpose, you will do anything to step into helping others and being a servant leader. And you have done that on so many faces, Gigi. You uh, talk to us about what you're studying. So you're a law student. And so I want, really want to dive into this, like, why did you choose to study this subject and to be so proficient in it? Yes, because it truly matters to me. I understand that law oversees everything in this entire world. I mean, you talk about policies and you, you, it goes back to the law. And so essentially, again, I will be finishing my law degree in 2021. So I'm super excited about that. You know, I really look at my transformation, how I almost lost my life a year and a half ago to now where I have transformed. It's been a massive transformation in my life. I I am, I would say God's servant on this, serving his people on this new platform he has given me. And I'm truly grateful for that platform he has given me because he has given it to me. Mm -hmm. And you're able to feel, you know, you have the empathy in your body to be able to authentically feel that when you put these panelists together, and you said, these are really important to me because they affect people in my life. And I've been through it. So I can understand how you feel, how that fear is, instead of feeding your fear constantly to try to feed your faith. And that's what you have laid out this plan for people to kind of walk in purpose through their whole life. If they just follow kind of your instruction of what you've given to them. And so that's why I think it's, you're so amazing. Because when you say, well, I have this dream. You are one that says, okay, but I need to put this into action and I want massive transformation in my own life and that you've stepped into that and you have listened, you've stepped forward, you've leaned in, you have put people around you in every way, in marketing, in production, in, in, um, in learning, like everything that you do, you have uh, really pushed the envelope to the highest level. And so in your constant energy, but it's because you have your why first and your passion is what fuels that energy. And so, you know, for a lot of people, they may say, yeah, but you you may be unique because maybe you have certain gifts or certain talents. But I say, no, yes, you do have God given strengths, but you have put people in your life to be able to say, here's how we can celebrate you and help you use your strengths. And that's what you have stepped into. You've done all the work to be able to see this massive transformation. And I know you've got so much more that's happening for 2021. And, and so tell us about what your next plans are. 
Yes, I'm super excited about that. So I'll be releasing my third book. <laughs> super excited about that. It will be called Overcoming Heart Blocks. And so again, it goes back to everything that I've been through in the past year and a half after I almost lost my life to be the Regeline Gigi Sabal that you see before you today. I mean, it was truly, I had to overcome tremendous heart blocks because you talk about domestic violence, you talk about sexual assault. These are, this is very traumatic incidents that occurred in my life that, that impacted me tremendously. And so it really, to be here before you today, to speak on, on such a different level, it, it really took some work within self. It took a lot of self-reflection. It took a lot of prayer. And that's why I talk about my relationship with God so, so much because it has grown tremendously. I, you know, I got baptized after everything happened. I reread the Bible after everything happened. I read it as a kid, but I reread it again as an adult. I have it right here next to me. Why? Because I start my day off with the Bible. I end my day off with the Bible. It's my best friend. And I tell you what, God knows the plans he has for us, but all things are possible with him, with him. So I give God the glory. I could not have done this without God. Amen. So talk to me about 2020. You know, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned in 2020 that you're going to try to teach others through your company, Life Service Center of America? Utilize your voice. That is a blessing from God. He gave it to you for a reason, to serve his people. Step into your purpose and walk with purpose and keep God first place in your life. And don't wait. You see, for me, I got the aha moment after I almost lost my life. But I'm here to tell you, if there's something that you feel right now that God is speaking to you to step into, do it now. Don't wait. Absolutely. And you feel it. You know, Gigi, you are such a, a light for all of us. Because just right when you talk to you about anything, it could be any subject in the world. You're going to go take it all the way back to, you know, if you believe in God, and if you believe that you have a purpose here on earth, that, that you should be able to just walk these steps and then shine your light. And so whatever that is, right, whatever that purpose is, you know, as a coach now and as your business develops, you know, I heard you about a year ago talk about what you saw. And now because you've taken the steps and planned out your entire year for 2020, you were equipping yourself to become you know, walking through this massive transformation. And so I think for anybody that is trying to connect to something bigger, that you're the person that really has put in the effort to take those steps to lead them. And I just, I really applaud you for that. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. And you great, you bring up a great topic. I mean, let's talk about, you know, 2020 and how COVID impacted businesses and people. I have to agree with you here. It didn't really affect me in a sense. Why? Because I pivoted quickly. And mind you, I didn't even have I didn't even have my business up before then. But here's the thing: I learned quickly in regards to the business and how it needs to operate and how it needs to function. And when something like this happens, like COVID, you need to pivot quickly. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Essentially, I just launched my website and company this year. But, you know, I really have to give it to God on why it's thriving. It's because of God. I'm, again, able to serve his people. And I understand his purpose for my life. And I'm truly grateful that I was able to pivot in such a manner that it did not impact me. But I'm here to tell the listeners today, if your business was impacted by COVID, don't give up. Do not give up. God is with you. Joshua 1, 9 states, haven't I commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for your Lord, your God is with you wherever you go. Don't give up. Keep moving forward. God is with you. Don't give up. You bring up such great points. You know, when I think about COVID-19 and here people are saying, well, in 2020, if I could have started something or if I could have done this and, and you think, you know, people think about who they are getting equipped by. Hi, Yobi. <laughs> um, but right, so you're not equipped and then called. He he equips who is called. So if you're sitting here thinking like, oh, I don't really know what I'm supposed to be doing. If you're really paying attention to what God's telling you to do, not your neighbor, not your spouse, not your kids, but really what's in your heart, what God's calling you to do. And maybe you haven't you haven't stepped into it yet. You've, you're just ignoring it, right? So when you're called to do something, 
he will equip you. He will equip you and you have to pay attention and be aware of what that looks like. And sometimes it can be scary, right? Because you had no idea what 2020 was really going to look like at the beginning. That's right. If you if you were to tell me I was going to launch my website, my company, launch my podcast, launch uh, two best selling books, I would I would I would look at you and say, really? After I almost lost my life a year and a half ago, th this is going to happen this year. And then to be surrounded by amazing people, as I mentioned, such as yourself, Daniel Gomez, Michael D. Butler, and Ragnas Sinekis as well. She's played a, a major role in my life as well. She's, she's become a great friend of mine. So I'm, I'm truly grateful for all of you. Well, you're bringing the power of connection in, right? It's all the people that really care about the success of each other so that you can help become a brand, that you can help become a voice. Like you said, you know, your biggest lesson is to use your voice, use your voice and don't, don't fear away from the things that are keeping you uh, from sharing that. Yes. <laughs> we love you, Yovi. Uh, right. But you have built this community of people now that can trust each other amongst these groups. So the domestic violence, the sexual assault and the breast cancer survivors, those are three groups of powerful people, right? On the panels that, that if, if anyone hasn't listened to these, they need to go back to these YouTube videos and really listen to these stories because they are unbelievable, incredible warrior mindset of women and men that have accomplished significance in their life because they have come to terms with something that was truly devastating, truly life-changing, and truly able to overcome those obstacles. And so, Gigi, what are, what are your plans for taking these groups and these communities to the next level? Great question. So we're building out a few programs here, which I'm actually working on with, with you as well. And I know I spoke with Lisa Edwards. She's t thinking about taking it on the road. <laughs> so I love that idea. And of course, Skipper Doodle, her, her puppy will be joining us. <laughs> you know, we have to pivot because of, because of COVID, right? So, and here's the thing, I, I really want to continue to grow out those discussion groups on, on Facebook. So if you're listening to this, if you're part of any of the groups, domestic violence, sexual assault, or breast cancer, really invite those individuals that you know can use that space to utilize their voice and to share their stories or to actually share their emotions. And, you know, if they need help, if they need support, that's the place where it happens is is in those discussion groups. Mm -hmm. So invite them. It, this is going to continue to grow for many years to come. It's already growing as we speak. But again, if you ask me if I knew this was going to occur, I would tell you no, because I did not know. God commanded me to, again, put those global platforms together. And so I did. And the amazing speakers that came together, it, God already had that put together. It wasn't me. So I give God the glory. And again, we're going to continue to build this out together to help people. That's awesome. I see Lisa just said, I am inviting others. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Right. This is a safe platform. And that's the thing. It's a community where it's a closed group. And so if you have been affected by any of these things, I think the you know, you asked me the biggest lesson, I guess, that I learned or the takeaway. You know, I had not suffered for any of these. So originally I was like, well, yes, of course I will be the MC. Of course I will lean to this and I'll help you in every possible way because I believe in bringing people together for community. And, and so, but what I saw was so much compassion for each other. And I learned so much about what people struggle with on things that I had never understood. And so now it's, it's that meeting people where they are and having that compassion to say, what are their resources you know, do they need that maybe you're surrounded by that you have access to that you can help and, and add value to them. And so I just think this is an amazing stint that you have done in the last few weeks. You know, you really came up with the idea, put the people together and then uh, uh, really flourishing in this next level, because now you've done this in 2020 for 2021 to build this out and then bring other really, you know, sponsors and leaders into this group that can, can help resource, right, uh, these communities. So I just, I celebrate you in so many ways, Gigi, because you have a big vision, a big heart, and you have big shoes to fill for anybody else that's kind of coming behind you uh, as they walk behind and say, how do I do that next? So I really encourage people to, to reach out and, and connect to you on that.
Thank you, Melanie. I truly appreciate you. And thank you, Lisa Edwards. I do see your comments coming in here. And thank you for continuing to invite people to the discussion groups as well. But I do want to also mention to the listeners, if you are a part of that group, or if you listen into our global virtual panels of domestic violence, sexual assault, breast cancer, and you have those links, share them. You know, people are reaching out in different organizations and they're utilizing that. They're repurposing it. You have my permission to do so, because if it's going to help people, you can utilize it. That's what it's about. That's why we did what we did to help others. Someone needs to hear those stories because if they can see a survivor thriving after what happened in their lives, they too can overcome because right now there's someone who needs to hear those messages. Especially we think of COVID-19, right? We've been talking about 2020 and the struggles you know, for the rates of domestic violence and sexual assault and just all of the connections for what mentally that happens. I forget who it was that talked about this on the panels. I think it was on the breast cancer panel of the statistics. If you have been abused for you to likely be diagnosed with some type of a disease, some type of cancer because of this abuse. Right. And so, right. Feeling not, not feeling alone Amen. is so true. But if you can't express your feelings, if you were able to get into a group that you could express your feelings freely and in a safe environment, that may help you or prevent from something else deeper happening to you from a physical standpoint, from a biological standpoint, because it is about getting into the right mindset. And I know, Gigi, you have this warrior's mindset group too, because that's truly, if you can overcome and conquer, then you will come out a winner and you will walk those steps with purpose uh, and to be able uh, to live a fulfilled life. That's right. And it's not about when, we, you know, and you mentioned a great point. When we talk about warrior, it's not about fighting anyone or anything. It's, it's really about the fight. It's life itself, because you're truly a warrior. If you can have an incident such as domestic violence, sexual assault, any of those topics, breast cancer, anything, overcome alcohol, any, any abuse, anything in your life, challenges, a school, anything. You're truly a warrior if you can get back up after a major, any challenge happens in your life. You're a warrior. Think and about job transformation, right? These people that have lost their jobs this year or have had to pivot and they've got kids at home. I think about Lachelle Adkins, 15 kids. <laughs> I mean, <Yes>. come on. <laughs> people well, that yeah, say, survivor of depression. Exactly. And she has battled depression, right? And she has battled so many things and still thriving to be an entrepreneur and still be a great super America super mom, right? <laughs> She's got that title hashtag America super mom. But I think about people like that, that, you know, maybe, maybe you don't know exactly what that depression link is from, but if you can find out what that is, and then you can say, that's going to affect the rest of my world and my health and my community and the people that I involve myself with. Gosh, if you could just tap into that and then say, if I actually fed my faith, instead of feeding my fears, not how to face that, it could really change your entire life. Amen. Feed your faith. Very powerful. And I love that you mentioned that because we really need to be reading the Bible now more than ever. Individuals need to be reading it daily. I mean, when we read the Bible, God is speaking to us. We are building a relationship with him. So again, prayer truly matters. That goes back to what you said. Even Bible study truly matters. And I love what you're doing with your group, Melanie. I mean, you started on, the, on this journey to read it daily, and here you are all coming together. Talk to us a little bit about that. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, you know, okay, so for those of you that are just joining or don't know, uh, I am part of the John Maxwell team. Here, let's let's give a little kudos to the bug and to the cards that Gigi and I had fun with. <laughs> and, oh, we have know. to play that before we end this tonight. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, John Maxwell is a person of faith and he started writing um, material. He started writing content for people in um, in faith-based communities. And what that what happened was people in business started buying most of his books. So when they started doing the marketing reports and they said, oh, my gosh, you know, more people in the secular community uh, are buying your books. And so now we need to kind of start marketing these differently. And so anyway, about uh, four or five years ago, I learned about this community that he was building of teams, John Maxwell team members, coaches, trainers, speakers. So when I joined, I really as a challenger right, as a challenger in my mind of my why, he told me two things. One was you need to study the 15 laws of growth and in a certain way and do it for a year. 
So I did. I left the conference and I started Zoom calls. Yep. Before before COVID. Uh, and we started doing intentional masterminds and learning how to study book studies on leadership. And then last September 2019, John Maxwell does a minute with Maxwell. Now, these are just every day, one minute that he pushes them out on YouTube. And so in September of 2019, I just, I, you know, I actually listened to it. I didn't say, oh, I'm going to save that for later. Here's what's his challenge. He challenged me and said, and he challenged everybody, but I heard it, right? So it was to me. <laughs> and he said, if you're going through transition in your life, if you need to learn something, if you need to be equipped with something, if you just need to meditate on, on a scripture, read the book of Proverbs. And I challenge you to read it for 31 days. Now, there's 31 chapters in Proverbs. And he says, if you don't know, it's in the middle of your Bible, <laughs> right? So just open your Bible and start reading Proverbs. And those are really the wisdom for your life. So last September, 2019, I put it out there on Facebook. Hey, I'm going to start this. And if anybody else wants to join me, sign on 730 Eastern every morning. And I want to learn the book of Proverbs. So who wants to join me? Um, and so initially we had, you know, three or four people come and go. Different people came and went, but depending upon school and depending upon all kinds of things in their life that were happening. But every day, we met and there were at least two people, right? Me and somebody else every single day. And uh, November the 1st of 2019, we were so fulfilled by the wisdom that we had learned. We said, let's keep going. So we studied Corinthians. We studied Luke. We studied Numbers. We've studied so many books of the Bible. And we go through every single chapter, one chapter at a time every day. So 7.30 a.m. Eastern, we meet and we study for at least 30 minutes. We read the scripture, we, do, we um, have a devotional, and we talk about the leadership lessons that we can apply to our own lives every single day. Now, today was day 453 or 54. <laughs> and what's amazing is we're continuing. We started back at Proverbs again, and now we're on Luke. We went Corinthians, we went Proverbs, Corinthians, Luke, and now we're going to go into Isaiah and Jeremiah. And we haven't studied Isaiah and Jeremiah before, but you know, our group is up to like 45 people. And so not all of them sign on on the same day, it, but you get fed for what you need. And so I've put it on meetup.com. I've put it on all kinds of links and it's on the everydayleaders.com front page. You just go there, click down to the devotional click on the devotional link and we'll we'll add you to the room. So it's pretty easy. You don't have to remember a link. You can just go to the website every morning and click on and join us and, you know, see what you learn because it has taught me patience, wisdom, meet people where they are, intentionality, and to just have an open heart for everything that we're going through. And really, what are we learning through these lessons, right? It's all in the book of Proverbs. It's all in the book of Proverbs. It's right there. Amen. Very powerful. Thank you for sharing that with us, Melanie. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, I would never have thought, you know, I had read the Bible, gone to church forever. My grandparents were song evangelists. My great grandparents uh, opened and built a tabernacle here in Indianapolis. It served the community and built the first nursing home in Indiana. Like I am from a servant family. And so when I think about all those things that I was brought up in my faith, but I had never really studied the Bible the way that I have decided to do this over the last year. And it has really made, it helped you kind of put the history of everything together, but also give you the confidence to say, you know, this is the living word. It's not, it wasn't written hundreds and hundreds of years ago to just put on a shelf. You can reference it. And every time you read it, you get something different out of it. And it really does give you an application to really help you think about how you can improve your life and then add value to the world. And that's what I absolutely just, you know, some of you just go dust off your Bible and get it out. Yeah. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> just doing it because it, it's right there. Everything is right there that you need to know. And it's right in front of you. Amen. Very powerful. So are you ready to move on to the John Maxwell? <laughs> Gosh, yes.
<laughs> Absolutely. You know it. All right. Here's our famous cards. Yes. <laughs> now, can you share the story of, of how those cards began with us? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. So Gigi and I were talking one night and she said, I don't know how to use StreamYard. And I'm like, oh, let's just do it. Let's just have some fun. So I got her through and we signed on. And so we were like, what are we going to talk about? Oh, let's talk about the wisdom of John Maxwell. And so, <laughs> yeah. so I brought these cards out because Melanie Massey actually made and designed these cards from John's quotes. So from all of his books that he teaches, uh, she uh, is an artist and she is awesome. And at the John Maxwell International Maxwell Conference, um, these are for sale. So I had a friend in the last conference, she, she bought these and sent them to me, um, but it's really the second edition. So there's many editions, but there are plaques and there's all kinds of things that you can um, have, you know, just as those inspirational quotes to have in your life to help you remember, you know, something that's on your heart that, that you are striving with for excellence. And you say, oh, that's what I should do. I should go love thy neighbor as thyself, right? Amen. Now that's a good one. So I'm going to stop right here because we've been studying this so much this, this month and saying, what does really love thy neighbor as thyself mean? Right? So if you don't love yourself, as you put these panels on Gigi, if you haven't come to a point where you love yourself, you can't follow that commandment. You can't love anyone else until you love yourself. And so I don't know, we read the Ten Commandments and we talk about it all the time. Love, really loving yourself, not being selfish, but knowing who you are and loving who you are, even though you've had difficult situations, even though maybe you've had to file bankruptcy through COVID, even though you've lost your job, right? Those things don't define you. Loving yourself for who you are, no matter what you look like, no matter how much money you have in the bank, no matter who's in your life to support you. Loving yourself first allows you to love everyone else. So that's my lesson for today. <laughs> Amen. And little did we know that when we went live for the first time with those John Maxwell cards, here's a story for you that, you know, someone reached out to me on Messenger talking about how that message saved their lives. So here's the thing. You never know what resonates with folks. I mean, you talk about the timing of when we did it to the timing of when that individual listened in on that video. And here's the thing. This is why I also continue to go live on Facebook. I mean, it was so inspiring for me. And, you know, a message that you shared with me as well. And here it's the same exact message again. So how much does the pattern need to repeat itself to get the main message, which is to continue to serve God's people, even on Facebook, even if it's filming on Facebook? That's right. Because it doesn't matter. You could read something a million times. Like when, remember when we were kids and our parents said, stop, stop, don't do that. 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 And you ask why, why, why don't do that. Don't do that. Stop, stop, stop. Well, until you finally got it, right? One day you finally realize that oh, that's what they meant. Mm -hmm. If I put my hand over that burner, I'm going to get burnt. And, and so you stop doing it. But just like we are as coaches, we have to continue the message that's in our heart because it's that next one person. When you have a message of passion, you're trying to just show up to help and add value to the world. And if you, if you refuse to do that, if you stop being... Um, really paying attention to how God's trying to equip you, you fail. You fail. You need to be equipping yourself to be able to be a servant leader. And because, you know, Gigi, we've talked about this a lot, but I think, you know, I believe that when we die, God's going to ask, did we use our gifts? Did we use our gifts to try to reach our potential? Right. And that, and so is that a good or bad person? Did you use your gifts? He gave us gifts. So that's the part of these cards, right? Encouraging you to find inspiration every single day mm -hmm. to say, do you know your gifts? Are you paying attention to your gifts? Are you using your why to go out and try to change the world in some way? So should we start? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Now, could the audience get involved? Could they pick a color maybe this time? And oh, gosh. Well, um, there's lots of them. <laughs> <laughs> so anybody watching, do you have a number? Do you want me to pick a number? Yes. Yeah, oh, so I'll start off here in, uh, how about this one? All right. <gasps> what do you have? This is, a great one. this is a great one. All right. Leadership isn't about winning. It's about bringing people with you to the finish line. <gasps> oh, that's a good one. 
<laughs> That's exactly what you've been doing. Right? Thank you. What a way to celebrate this. Winning at the end of the year, celebrating everybody else that's been in your life, bringing people with you to the finish line. Amen, sister. Amen. <laughs> okay, next one, next one. Let me let me choose the color. Let me see. The blue one, the baby blue. Yes, right there. No, in the middle, <laughs> to your left. Right there. Right there. Yeah. <gasps> let the best idea win. Wow. So, right. So if you don't have the best idea yet, if you haven't come up with the best idea, this is one of the things in the why, right? If we think about a better way, you're always challenging. What is the win? What's the win going to look like for you? And, and you think, well, there's something better. There's got to be something more I got to create. So what does that mean for us, Gigi? That means putting the right people around us because we can see a vision, but we can't do it by ourselves. We got to have people around us that can support us and help us grow and help us think and help us create. And so that's how you get to the best, right? You can't do it alone. You can't do it alone. That's what John would tell us. <laughs> God servants need God servants. <laughs> that's right. Let's see. You choose one, Melanie. Let's flip it. Flip it. All right. Uh, <laughs> let's see this one. All right. Ooh, this is a great one. All right, there ideas. Ideas have a short shelf life. Okay, you must you must act on them before the expiration date. Mm. So, ideas have a short shelf life. So, everybody on here tonight, are you journaling? This is the point, right? So, are you journaling every single day? Because if you have a thought that's come to your mind as you've been watching this for fifty-one minutes, and you've had to have one thought that it's like, ah, oh, I need to do that. If you don't journal, if you don't write that down, if you don't take action on it, there's absolutely no way that you're going to follow up on it, right? Go to a conference and they say you lose 70% of what you saw and what you learned as soon as you walk out that door. So with this one, ideas have a short shelf life. If you don't write it down, if you don't have a way to journal, you're not going to remember and you're not going to take action on the things that have inspired you. So Amen. And you talk about action. Let's talk about that for a moment. Action truly matters. I mean, you know, let's let's utilize us as a testimony as well that when you do take action, the results show in regards to what God already had planned for you. You just really have to step into it. So again, when, once you make that decision, that's it. You made that decision. Don't go back and say, oh, well, that's it for me. I, I actually changed my mind. No, you made up your mind for a reason. You made a decision to step into your purpose. So once you make that decision, keep moving forward. Don't look back. That's right. And keep yourself accountable, right? Those are the people that you put in your life. And the journaling is you can look back on that and say, what was I thinking about yesterday when it's came to mind the last time? Because there'll be, there'll be some type of a thread that you keep getting reminded because that is God tapping on your shoulder, equipping you to say, I'm calling you to do something and you're not paying attention yet. So I'm going to make you think about it more and more and more and make it more, more aware to put it right in front of you so that you don't forget it because I really need you to show up like this. And so, right. And, but we get afraid of so many things and we go, oh, that's not me. I can't, I could never do that. Gee, you could never be on social media. Why would you think that you could do that? Right. You need to hide in the background and just let things happen and let life come to you. And you said, Nope, this is on my heart. This is what God told me to do. And so that's what you stepped into. That's what you stepped into. Amen. Amen. Should we do one more? Yes. Okay. <laughs> right there. That one. <laughs> oh, the secret to your success is determined by your daily agenda. Wow. And I just wrote a quote today about not procrastinating and going and doing what you set out to do. That is very powerful. Consistency. Consistency will lead to clarity, right? When you say, I have all these dreams. So think about starting a business and you think about what your life has to look like, the commitment and the trade-offs that you have to put into your life to be able to create a new agenda, a new agenda for success, right? A new agenda that includes God, a new agenda that includes meditation a new agenda that includes planning, time for planning for your financial, 
your spiritual, your health, your career, uh, all of those things that you have to do consistently. So putting them on your daily agenda is the only way that that's going to work. It's the Amen. only way that it's going to work. Amen. Consistency truly matters. I mean, I think about when I started out in 2020, I said, okay, I'm going to do the daily quotes. And I have done a quote daily in, in the story section of my social media to help others daily. And I mean, you talk about if I wasn't consistent, I mean, because you never know what resonates with someone. You never know what message resonates with someone. It could be the most, you know, opposite message that you thought would resonate with someone that actually resonates with them. And that's what the pattern that I'm seeing, you know, since I started sharing those daily quotes. So yes, consistency truly matters. If it's on your heart, do it. Right. If you get if you get a message, if you get an idea to do something, step forward into it, because there's a reason that that came into your mind. Right. It's for somebody else. It's it's for somebody else. So um, just do it. I've heard so many stories, Gigi, like that from people from all walks of life that have said, gosh, if I hadn't posted that somebody else really needed it, they paid attention to it. They either put the gun down. They stopped abusing their family member. They thought about how to reach out to somebody else for help. They started to get resources. They changed, you know, they quit their job that day, right? I've heard, I've had people say that I read that. And then I decided I'm going to quit my job today. And I'm like, well, was, is that what I meant? <laughs> you know? But what you write from your heart, people take that different ways. And so you have to know if it's been inspired to you through God, and you're doing that to try to just inspire and help others, it will, it will, and it, it will absolutely change people. So do it, do it consistently. Amen. All right. Oh, one. <laughs> that one right there. Okay. A leader is one who, this is good, who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. So a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. So, right, you know it, you have to learn it, then you have to go that route, you have to walk that route, and then you show others how to do it. This is significant for everything that we do in our life. If, you know, if you have kids and you're raising a family, you have to do it first to be that model for everybody else. And so right now, especially during COVID, like how have you pivoted? to show them that you're really strong and you're going to get through this and you're going to have faith and you're going to be able to celebrate at the end of all this and not say, woe is me and doom and despair and misery. Like you're really going to celebrate the things that you've learned through this lesson, right? So Gigi, what does that mean to you? Know the way, go the way and show the way. Again, it's all about purpose. Walk with purpose and keep God first in your life. Think about a time where you tried to do it your way. Did it work out? When you didn't pray, when you didn't speak to God, when you didn't listen to him, did it work out? Really think about that for a moment. When you tried to do it yourself, that's because it, it only works with God because he knows the way. He knows the way. He goes the way and he shows the way. So, wow. Incredible. Lessons, lessons from God. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's a great place to, to you know, finalize this message in, as we go into 2021 with purpose. Make sure to keep God first in your lives. Mm -hmm. You can't do it without it. And uh, you can do it a lot easier if you're just paying attention to things that are around you. You know, God designed us for purpose on purpose and to reach a potential. And so I, I really just, I love you, Gigi, because this platform is so important, you know, to get encouragement so that people can just say, I don't have to be afraid anymore. I can have a community. I can have a tribe of people that support me so I can learn how to lead my life first. And once you do that, your whole life changes. Amen. God is truly great. And I'm, I'm truly grateful to have you in my life, my friend. And I really look forward to collaborating with you and serving God's people in, in 2021 and beyond. Amen. Only God knows the plans he has. <laughs> Amen, sister. Yeah. I'm with you. <laughs> thank you. Yes. And thank you all for listening in tonight. We, we truly appreciate you. Any last messages, Melanie? 
Uh, you know, I just think uh, no matter what you are, no matter where you are in your life, you matter. And so today, really, I want you to think into how have you led your life through 2020 and really the goals that you have for 2021. If you don't understand how to get there and you're really just struggling, you know, just pray about it and start doing something different, something that you can be consistent in every day to bring clarity in your life, because that's where it starts. Once you become clear, then you can start to, to develop, you know, the plan of action. And so you can't do that, though, before you know yourself. And so give yourself grace, love yourself, meditate, and start something consistent in your life. Amen. And I challenge you all to write down each day something new that you learn, because again, growth is truly the beauty of life. And thank you all for listening to Melanie Ake and I in regards to walking into 2021 with purpose. And we are now closing this chapter of walking through 2020 with everyday leaders in 2020, right? And we're going to continue to walk with purpose in 2021. God first. Man, thank you, Gigi. You're welcome. Thank you, Melanie. Have a blessed day. You too. <laughs>